I guess I'm next. So I have a presentation that I want to share with everybody here. Um, and it is called The History and Current State and Future of Podcasting. This is kind of a snapshot of my view of the podcasting space um, and wanting to uh, to kind of, kind of share. I've been involved in the podcasting uh, space for many, many years. And... Um, uh, and wanted to just kind of share my perspective on it and a little bit of the history and kind of where we are today and um, and kind of a, a little bit of a glimpse into what, what, what the future is going to kind of look like here um, when it comes to podcasting. So as you can see on the screen right now, um, I do have a, a slide up that can kind of help you follow along with the uh, presentation here. So um, let's let's go ahead and um, I'll just say who I am. My, my name is Rob Greenlee. I'm the, the VP of Content Partnerships at a podcast hosting company called Lipson at Lipson.com. I started podcasting back in uh, September 15th of 2004. I'm uh, Actually, it was a nationally syndicated uh, radio show that I took out as a uh, podcast in 2004. I started that radio show in 1999. Uh, so I've been on radio as well as on the on the digital distribution side for for many many years, uh, over 20 years now. Um, so, but podcasting for you know 17 years or so. But uh, I'm also the co-host currently of a podcast called the the New Media Show at newmediashow.com. I'm the board member, former chair of the Podcast Academy, um, and that is at thepodcastacademy.com. And in 2017, I was inducted into the Academy of Podcasters Hall of Fame, and I can certainly be reached um, at robg at lipson.com if you want to re reach out to me. So let me go ahead and uh, s skip to the next slide. Uh, what I wanted to talk about really quick here is kind of um, where the podcast name came from. And this isn't talked about a lot, um, but it is a word that came out of uh, the 2004 timeframe, 2003, 2004 timeframe, but primarily out of um, early February of 2004. It was uh, a, a word that was put out by a journalist, Ben Hammersley, who was a, a journalist for The Guardian uh, in the UK, and he was also a BBC journalist. Uh, actually, he was uh, he was kind of a geek. He wrote a book on RSS, uh, and thus why he had an interest in this convergence between what, what was happening um, in online audio. If you think about it prior to 2004, there were platforms like Napster, and there, so there, there was a lot of revolutionary things going around. Um, audio distribution back in those days mainly focused around music, um, but there were other things happening too around streaming audio and streaming video. But there were radio shows like like the show that I was doing back in those days um, that were making their shows available for download or playing off of the internet or the web also back then. And so he wrote an article about this convergence that was happening of um, broadcasters making their shows available um, online. And this was prior to the launch of podcasting in its form that we know today. And so he just threw out a couple of names uh, because people were downloading um, their audio files and transferring them over to like an iPod or a portable MP3 player, which we're starting to develop back then. So anyway, he wrote an article outlining all this stuff, and this is the the article that is cited as the original source of the of the name of the word podcasting. He actually threw out a couple other names too, like audio blogging and uh, guerrilla media, which obviously that never took any traction. But but anyway, that's it. and in 2005, uh, the word podcast was added to the Merriam-Webster uh, dictionary. Uh, the definition that, that they uh, assign to a podcast, which is very interesting in the context uh, here, is a program as of music or talk made available in a digital format for automatic download over the internet. 
So that was the original definition um, as the word podcast came from the convergence between um, iPod and broadcast. So uh, back then, you know, broadcast was a big part of this. Uh, a lot of the early radio companies were involved in podcasting. So larger media have been in podcasting really since the very beginning. Uh, lots of folks, I, I think, think that that isn't the case, but that certainly was what was the case. So I think we've talked enough about the origins of the name podcast. So l l let's go ahead and talk about kind of how and who created podcasting. It was actually uh, the technology of podcasting was created by two two gentlemen, Dave Weiner uh, and Mr. Adam Curry. Uh, Dave Weiner is is really a technologist. Uh, um, he's an engineer. He created the the technology, uh, or was the credited as the original founder of RSS, um, and and he started building in uh, functionality into the RSS specification and added the enclosure tag. Um, Fairly early, this was prior to podcasting. This was back in like the 2000 timeframe, 2001 timeframe. And so he was playing around with this concept of being able to attach uh, digital media files to RSS and, and, and was playing around with software that could um, catch that media file, whether it be video, audio, or uh, PDF or it could even be like a, like a Word document that could be shared via RSS. It's just a matter of providing a URL link in the RSS um, item area in the enclosure tag, which basically gave the opportunity for software to be able to look at that and say, I'm going to create an automatic download of whatever that media file is in that RSS feed. So Dave Weiner um, really experimented around with that in 2001 or so and actually did it for the first time, captured an audio file out of an RSS feed in 2001. So he's credited really with creating the early technology of um, podcasting. And then Mr. Adam Curry in about 2003 to 2004, uh, him and a developer friend uh, created a, uh, a kind of a consumer podcatcher, which is a software client that does like a, a Apple podcast type of, a, it was called iPod or back in those days that could automatically start downloading an MP3 file or a PDF file or a MP4 file. Um, to a portable media player. So that started in the very early days. Um, Adam Curry also had a podcast uh, called The Daily Source Code uh, that he started in August 13th, 2004. So he was also a very early podcaster uh, in, in, in the space. Um, I started uh, making my uh, uh, Web Talk World radio show available as a podcast in September 15th of 2004. So I was like a, a month behind Adam in his support of podcasting. So I don't know that Adam is credited with creating the first podcast, but he's uh, definitely right there at the top of the list. So that's enough of talking about uh, the hotly debated story of the origins of podcasting. So now I wanna jump into talking about the, um, the current state of podcasting and kind of the scale of the market of podcasts right now. So currently in, um, in the, um, the podcast, uh, uh, it's a podcast index.org uh, site. They are tracking the number of shows all time um, that are available in the podcasting space as of July. And that's about 4 million and 40,000 plus shows right now, uh, of which there are about 570,000 shows that are, have actively published a fresh episode in the last two months. So in the last 60 days, so you can see there's a there's a big discrepancy between active shows and shows all time shows that have been created in the podcasting space, and and then also to drop down uh, the number of shows that have published a new episode in the last 10 days goes down to 260 thousand plus shows, and then active shows that have published a new episode in the last three days is about 117,400 plus shows. So you can see the, the active show numbers drop uh, very quickly around how many shows are actively publishing new episodes, even at a, a one episode in 60 day timeframe. So 
So there's many shows that are archive shows or many shows that were started and what, what they call pod faded, which means that they are still active in the catalog. They have a few episodes, but they're not actively being updated. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a snapshot of what's happening with that. And then um, wanted to jump to kind of um, another topic that's kind of a little bigger picture around the future of human to computer communications uh, based on audio. And this is key, I think, to the kind of the, the growth of what we've seen in podcasting and the growth of just audio in, in general in, in all of our lives and how we're using audio more and more to, to connect on a global scale uh, that crosses cultures, uh, gender and ethnic and racial lines. Um, and, and it's creating deeper connections, I believe, and deeper um, abilities for all those cultures and those different um, groups in our society to connect on a more personal level. Um, so, and it's, and I think that interest in doing that in technology like the smart speaker platforms and, and how we're using spoken word audio more in um, activating our computing devices as well has renewed the interest and has created a rise in the interest in paid audio subscriptions uh, I think audiobooks are merging with the, the podcasting world right now as podcasting moves a little bit more towards paid subscription content. And then we're also seeing the growth of the social audio platforms start to really take off as, as well. So, so those, those are all platforms that enable people to do, like I said before, is create global scale connections, uh, people sharing information and people's ability to activate and access online information based on voice and based on audio. So, and like, like I mentioned in the last bullet here, um, voice agents uh, are playing an increasing role in our ability to interact and access um, online information and other people as well. So let me uh, scroll to the next slide. And... Um, now, on-demand podcasting um, deep dives into interests. So as uh, Jalika was just sharing uh, around um, podcasting is, is very much linked with uh, passion interests um, and trying to create that, those passion interests that make connections with people. And that content can be short, long. It generally needs to be entertaining. It needs to be... Uh, fun, but it also can serve a very serious purpose uh, around learning and connecting with others and sharing um, kind of stories uh, that are impactful to people's lives. And, and more and more, audio is becoming a go-to resource, like I was saying earlier. Uh, everything is really funneled around audio the, these days more and more. Um, you know, with the convergence of audiobooks and premium podcasting. So that just kind of continues that, that, that thread. But podcasting is definitely core to a lot of the stuff. And it's actually the, the word podcasting is starting to expand, I, I believe, into much more um, areas of um, audio content. And, and we will also see a continued uh, expansion globally to reach uh, multi-billions of people in every country on the planet. Uh, and connecting people um, in all languages across the, the planet. So I think it's a huge opportunity and, um, and I think it's, it's just expanding and, and growing tremendously right now. So podcasting also uh, will improve ways um, in how we communicate with customers. So if you have a business, if you have a interest in driving some commerce, or around your your podcasts, you know, audio content taps into an authentic human connections that builds understanding, value, and trust that can also build brand connections, which is, as you look to the future, you know, um, that sells better than traditional radio ads or sells better than more traditional advertising and concepts. It's It's building human connections and trust and value that can um, that can extend into being able to grow your business organically, 
And and I, I do think that there is a lot of pressure on building um, um, a- advertising relationships online on platforms like Facebook and Twitter and and more and more um, yeah, that stuff is getting linked up with audio as, as well. So, um, but I do think that the value of the content itself, uh, I think over time will will really start to take off. I mean, podcasting has really seen a lot of growth in in branded podcasting, which tends to be shows that are not necessarily um, directly promoting or advertising the brand, but they're building relationships with audiences that have connections with those brands um, that can drive trust and context to the value of the products or services that are being offered. Um, And then uh, listener support models are also growing in popularity as well. And so when I say listener support models, I'm talking about donation models, uh, freemium models, ones that are, that are linked up with listeners supporting the content creators and, and really um, growing more, diverse and building brand connections. I mean, um, listener support models really kind of move away from advertising and they, they're really based on direct support. Um, so let me move on to the next slide and uh, let's see here. All right. So to listeners, um, what is a podcast? or podcasting. Uh, I think the common thing that people uh, have perceived out there is that it's an audio enclosure in an RSS feed. There are a growing number of listeners that think a podcast is just some person with a microphone and a a thought that they want to share. And that is that is a perception and an understanding that is um, easy to understand. Um, most people, when they listen to a podcast, that's exactly what they experience. So, you know, and and li- listeners have been exposed to that concept, right? Um, it's in most podcasts. And it is an informed perception about the medium. Um, but is podcasting expanding in, in, into something more than that is the is the question, you know, where is podcasts and podcasting heading? Um, you know, I, like I mentioned the prior side, growing number of listeners are thinking a podcast is simply someone sharing something on a microphone about anything, but is or has the meaning of podcast expanded as you think about the podcasting medium today? And this has been a struggle that I've been seeing in the podcasting space for many years is, um, listeners start to look at podcasts in an expanded view over the last 10 years uh, as we've seen the growth of podcasting um, and the content creators in podcasting moving out and creating content in other areas and becoming what I call kind of multi-media uh, content creators. So they're creating streaming video, they're creating audiobooks, they're creating YouTube videos, they're creating exclusive paid subscriptions, they're creating audio, social audio sessions. So the, are we seeing, and, and th- th- this may have been happening for many years, an, an expansion of the meaning of what a podcast is. And I do think that we are seeing this. I think to, to listeners, um, I don't think they really care uh, and I think as podcasters, we should probably start thinking more and more about um, expanding the, the the word podcast to include, you know, it's really a type of content um, and it's not necessarily uh, based on a, a particular medium like, like it was in the early days where it was just based on, you know, downloading via an RSS feed. So it does tend to be expanding. So let me move on from that. Um, why is podcasting flaming up with uh, growing acceleration uh, of listeners? Uh, I think it is because of growing search discovery uh, and listener sharing. I think um, when, when I say search discovery, you, know, you see Google entering the podcasting space with their own platform on, on Google, and you're seeing uh, just uh, the importance of search becoming more and more important. And then listener sharing has always been one of the key drivers of uh, listener growth. And I, I believe the quality of content has gone up in the podcasting space and that is accelerating that. Um, and then also 
to follow along with that, uh, web browser-based audio players. Um, Apple and Google, about a year ago or so, released um, audio players online. So we're, we're starting to see that happen in browsers more as well, and that can happen on mobile devices as well. You know, and the entry of Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Samsung, um, Audible, and Amazon Music getting into the podcasting space has also fueled the, the growth and the expansion of platforms uh, that make podcasts available outside of the U.S. are also um, growing at an exponential rate right now as well. So the expansion of podcasts um, on a global scale is accelerating in, in listenership and listener loyalty to podcasting outside of the U.S. Um, can actually and is showing in the data to be accelerating even faster than what, what's happened in the North America market. And w with the growth and, and, and deployment of wireless AirPods and other mobile um, listening earphones is huge. Smartwatch listening uh, with the Apple Watch is growing and developing. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the, the smart speaker platforms are coming into the car. They're also moving into IoT devices, which is the the Internet of Things. Uh, so, you know, eyeglasses, you can listen to podcasts through eyeglasses now through the Amazon um, uh, Frames product now. So you're starting to see those things start to grow as well. So um, what now? Um, you know, Apple Podcasts has now launched premium subscription and and you know, does this have a potential of being seen as a cash grab from your listeners? Well, maybe. Uh, should you try it? Um, what and what is the point? You know, I mean, is 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 Apple's deployment of this um, kind of a game changer in the industry? Um, they are wanting you to upload their content directly to them, but they do still support. Uh, third-party external premium um, subscription platforms as well. So it would just be cutting and pasting an RSS feed into the Apple Podcasts platform, and you can get access to a third-party premium subscription uh, model as well. But, um, you know, this this was and is a little bit of an inflection point. Um, Apple has put this premium subscription thing up front and available to listeners in their platform. Uh, which is something that did not exist before. And so this has changed the conversation to some degree. Um, and for some content creators, this is an opportunity. And others, it's, it's, it's just not. Um, and it will primarily be something that just a smaller percentage of the podcasting space will, will embrace o over time. But um, for now, um, it's it has changed the, the landscape of podcasting and actually made the the integration of audiobooks into podcasting kind of kind of a little bit more possible at this point. So, um, so is I know the podcasting space here over the last few years uh, about money entering into the podcasting space. You see a lot of these big companies investing and uh, doing licensing deals with content creators. Um, is is doing a podcast really all about making money? Uh, it, is money changing podcasting and is that bad? It, you know, it, is it about anything else to you? And I think that's that's an interesting question that all of us as podcasters or, or people that want to create podcasts have to ask themselves. Uh, and this goes back to your goals as a content creator and a podcaster is what are your, 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 your goals? What are you trying to accomplish here? And is it about money? And it's okay if what you do is a business. There's no question about that. So, Anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, new listener growth and and where that's coming from. So, you, so you think about uh, the entry of Spotify a few years ago uh, with uh, 200 million potential listeners, and then you have Google with two two billion people that are using that platform, and the the recent entry of Amazon Music and, and Audible with about 55 plus million users on that platform, and some music. Uh, on on the um, 
The Android platform uh, is about 140 million potential users. Ghana, um, 175. GeoSavin Music, uh, you know, 125 to 150 million. And there's um, some that are coming platforms that are going to be um, coming out of the Middle East as well into the podcasting space and in Asia. And there's other platforms that are coming. So we're not done growing the, the potential platforms of listeners. So um, let's go ahead and jump ahead here. I'm kind of running out of time, but uh, um, podcast uh, li listening and content creation is, is growing younger and much more diverse. Uh, and it's mirroring or exceeding the, the, the broader population of the planet. So we're seeing uh, content and listeners coming uh, from all sectors, all race, ethnic, uh, religions, uh, language from all around the, the, the world. And it's just accelerating right now. And it's really exciting to see. It hasn't always been like this in podcasting. And, and having this happen is, is a huge opportunity to, to grow this medium to just massive scale. And I think that is, is an opportunity for many, many people in the podcasting space. And, and, and the truth is, as we open up again after the, the pandemic, podcast listeners are getting back out again. They're getting in their cars. They're, 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 they're also listening at home because they got trained that that is a good option as well after the COVID lockdowns and things like that, where people had to change their listening behavior, um, you know, and people are basically listening to podcasts while they're doing anything out there. And, and it's prior to COVID uh, podcast listening at, at home was not as, as strong as it is now. So I think people have changed their pattern and, and um, added podcasting in more places in their lives. And that's a huge opportunity. So let me jump ahead here. Podcasting is really all about storytelling. Um, and, and it needs to be emotional. It needs to be entertaining. And it does need to have some educational components to it too. Uh, with, with, with some podcasts, there, there's a lot to be learned in telling stories and sharing things. Uh, podcasting really started out in its uh, early years. Um, and even up to just the last couple of years as a reality storytelling based medium. So I, I like to share this concept because I, I think it puts things in perspective of where the podcasting space is right now. Um, but most of the content that's been created in podcasting um, over its 16 plus years, 17 years has been primarily reality based stories, whether it be true crime, whether it be biographies, personal stories, re referential, you know, any kind of, um, comedy, news, things like that tend to be reality-based um, or came out of reality. Um, but what we're seeing happen now is the growth and development of fictional podcasts. And those are um, um, growing and developing right now. And I believe will be the next big wave that comes to uh, podcasting will be coming out of that. So podcast li listeners um, that download their the, the content, over 85%, of the downloaded uh, episodes um, do get listened to. So, I mean, in the early days of podcasting, a lot of people were concerned about people downloading on an automatic download and people weren't listening, but the, but the research is telling us that uh, people do consume the podcast once they, they capture it or download it. Now more and more listeners are streaming now, which is a little bit of a different paradigm here, um, but it's still all a download currently. Um, streaming doesn't really exist in podcasting. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm finished. Um, so, uh, let me, uh, jump to the next, uh, slide here. And that is my presentation. Um, I know I went a few minutes over here. Hope, hopefully we can, we can flop over with the next presentation, but, uh, you can certainly, uh, follow me. I'm at, uh, uh, at, and send me an email if you want, Rob G at Lipson.com. You can use the, the free, um, Promo code, actually, I have on the screen here, it's Rob G, but you can also use um, Podlines as a promo code as well. So if you want to get a free um, up to two months of podcast hosting, if you want to start a podcast. But you can certainly reach me on my mobile if you want to 
follow me on Twitter as well. And uh, I thank you so much for, uh, for spending time with me with my presentation here.